Okay, here we are. So uh, this is Donna Kundi and Bill Eastman, and we are with Sales 2020 radio show, and we wanted to come today to do a lesson on uh, the economy based really on this quote by Mark Twain. Bill and I were having a conversation, and he said, history may not repeat itself, but it sure does rhyme, and that really struck me as where we are right now in in today's economy and in today's world with this pandemic that's going on. And it made me think of the law of rhythm where the world just cycles. It continues to cycle. And when it says history may repeat itself, but it sure does, may not repeat itself, but it sure does rhyme. It says that we never really experience the same sunrise day after day. We never really experience the same season year after year but they're very similar. Every spring comes with it certain flowers, certain um, expectations, you know, a lot more rain. Every winter, we have a lot of things that die off, and we just know that there is a predictability to it, even though it might seem random at the time. We know that after winter comes spring, after spring comes summer, and so there's this repeating of life, there's a repeating of patterns, um, but it's not exactly the same. So this history may repeat, it, may not repeat itself, but it sure does rhyme. Really struck me. And from this, um, Bill is going to be talking about some experience that he's had, both as an oceanographer, I believe that's the right term, and yeah, marine scientist. But it works. Okay, good. And as a, a business consultant. So Bill, I'd like to turn it over to you now to do some talking. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, we like this quote because history really is a corkscrew. And that as you go around this cycle, you wind up at the same point, but it's not exactly the same. It's different. Uh, so if we look at the economy and we look at the business cycle, is that there are four distinct stages to the business cycle. And when you're at one of those stages, if you've been through a couple, now, I was in the military, and the first depression or recession that I experienced uh, was right at the end of George H. Uh, Bush uh, administration uh, leading up to Clinton. So I've seen 90 to 92. We had the 99 to 2001, the 2007, 2008 downturn. And apparently, because of COVID-19, we're going to have the same thing here. So part of the premise is we've been here before. What lessons can we take from that? And this is based upon a presentation and a paper that I wrote a couple of years ago uh, as a, taking the standpoint or the viewpoint of an entrepreneurial capitalist. And I was trying to help small business owners read the economy because we can grouse and be very unhappy about the fact that we're, I believe, about to enter a recession, but there's nothing to be done about it. And so why waste a lot of time and emotion on an event that you have no control over. And I, Rather I, than say, as a business owner, okay, it's gonna happen. How do I turn it to my advantage or how do I minimize the impact that it has on my business? Yeah, because that's where um, we're feeling the pulse that a lot of business owners are right now. There's a lot of fear, there's a lot of panic. Will my business make it through? And if it does, what does it look like? Uh, and so this economic decision-making model, I think is gonna be very eye-opening. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to that and we're gonna go through it quickly. Uh, usually there is, if, if, if this was a formal presentation, there'd be eight, 10 slides with detailed how-tos because I don't particularly like talking about something and telling people what and then leaving out the most important piece. Okay, what do I do about it? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of represent this idea of a wave theory. And so, and I'm going to put two of these up. And so the business cycle is just like ocean waves. Um, you've got, you've got peaks, uh, or crest and you got troughs. And so what happens is that each wave as a marine scientist, each wave has a height that it'll obtain and it has a period of time, what we call a paradosity between the trough and the crest. And you can know a lot of things about water and how deep it is by simply understanding this. So for example, if you've got very steep waves and they're very close together, you're in shallow water. That's why being in a bay at six foot is worse than being in the ocean at 10 feet because the ocean waves are further apart. But the analogies work here in business and all you have to do is take a look at uh, Elliott wave theory is a great one to start with if you're not familiar with this. 
is that a number of economists over the years, and I'm going back to the turn of the last century, have looked at the business cycle as a series of waves running their way through the, the economy. And Donna, you have an interesting insight on how that works, that rhythm. Uh, and, and that's what we were talking about uh, in the introduction about the, the law of rhythm, that it's very predictable. We always know that, it, it, you know, um, anybody in the Empower Living tribe knows, Paul will talk about, you can pick up your phone and Google what time the sun will rise in, on May 31st, 2029, and know exactly when that is. It's because the sunrise is that predictable. The same thing with the, with the tides. We know that they're going to ebb and flow at a certain time. And we also know in this economic decision model that things are going to happen. They're going to be very predictable. And when we, can, when we know the predictability of it, we can take that and apply it to our life as it is right now and get some more clarity and some more focus in order to move forward. Okay. So then let me take that and take that a step further and use the vantage point for a minute, not as a small business owner, but as somebody who's an investor. I'm a professional investor. Uh, whether I'm investing uh, in stocks, bonds, doesn't matter, uh, or I'm, you know, I'm, I'm investing in growth funds or I'm a hedge fund manager. How do I look at the market? And, and the way I came to this is when I was consulting with large corporations, I would take a look at if they were a stock, which they were, they were all publicly traded, would I buy that stock? What is the advisory coming out from a stockbroker on that? Is it a buy? Is it a hold? Is it a sell? And so I started looking at all my clients in terms of where they stood in the business cycle. And then that one thing led to another. And then when I started doing coaching and consulting with small businesses, I went, wow, I have kind of a model that works pretty well. And I fleshed it out from there. So some of this is well-known information that you can get from Elliott Wave. If you're familiar with any investors, they will kind of give you the same thing. And then what we'll show you is our uh, special sauce. So let's look at this. And you can pick any place you want to start on the cycle. I picked here. A new opportunity. So what the trough represents is if you look at the law of supply and demand, what this really means is that, is that there is absolutely no demand. Now, on the supply side, nobody's been making anything because we've, just, we've gone through this recession. So there's nothing being made. There's nobody buying. But one of the early indicators that we're at the bottom you know, it's kind of like the old story about it's the darkest before the dawn, is that we're beginning to see that um, supply is beginning to drop and sales are beginning to go up. And this is one of the opportunities that stockbrokers take a look at and say, okay, there's movement in the market, which means we may be at the bottom. The second stage here is, and this is the clearest indication, that everybody is now in agreement that the market is going to expand and that's when you start seeing credit loosen up because at the bottom there is very little credit and it's for two reasons the lenders are not confident so therefore they're not lending money and that um, if you are a business you're not borrowing because why borrow money if you're not sure you can pay it back you can't make the sale and so what you see here is that credit becomes available and it's getting more and more now eventually part of the bubble busting is going to be uh, cheap credit, which is kind of where we are right now. Number three is what they call in the market euphoria. And that is, you can do no wrong. You can't pick bad in the stocks. It may not get the return that the other ones get. But basically, at this point, we're at um, the rising tide is bringing up all boats. I think uh, we go back to when Alan Greenspan was the head of the Fed. He, he called this a um, uh, something about... Uh, the exact irrational exuberance is what he called this. <laughs> that was the term. I was searching that post them note in my head. Okay. Now at the top here, you have a condition that we that would is called distress. In other words, it's becoming apparent that the market is basically worked its way out. Now, what you have in common here is that at the begin at, in the expansion from new opportunities up till now. All the indicators are up. When we get on the other side of the curve, all the indicators are down. When you, when you can tell you you're either in a trough or in, at the crest is that the market is moving sideways. It's giving you mixed signals. So the distress here is it's over, and now people are starting to worry about their positions. In other words, especially if, you, if you're playing, uh, you're using leverage, and you, uh, you're playing with the options, let's say. 
Then the next stage is revulsion. And what that means is the market is now, it's obvious this thing is going bad and it's going down. And everybody's kind of like, ooh, that tastes terrible. And so what they're looking at is all the decisions they made and whether or not those decisions are good ones. And then finally at the bottom, you have the stage we would call the panic, is that it's, it, you, everybody's going, this should be over, and it really isn't, and it's horrible. Now, right now, we're someplace in our economy between distress and revulsion. Mm -hmm. And typically what you can see here, what it, that happens for one of two reasons. One, natural, the market at some point gets overextended, um, the credit bubble gets too big, and basically the bubble's gonna burst. Or you have a black swan event. What created the downturn in 2007 uh, was the, the, the housing issues where they were basically, the government was guaranteeing money, people were bundling that up in initiatives uh, into the derivatives, and what happened was there was no risk. Well, that couldn't last very long. That was a black swan. Now we have COVID-19, and that's the black swan going through the economy. And so this is pretty much everything I put up here is pretty much standard uh, knowledge. You might define these differently, but again, anybody who is an economist or anybody who invests in the market, you'll get this information. Here's the difference. Here's and, our difference. And, and Donna, just so Donna can, and I bring to this. Go ahead, Donna. Just so I can put in here a, a little perspective also, if we're between distress and revulsion, it means that we're going to hit panic for as it comes. We know that it's coming, we can prepare for it, but then we also know that we're going to move past it. So that law of rhythm. Yeah, because what I'm going to do is while everybody's panicking, if I'm a business owner and I understand what was coming and I did the things I'm supposed to do, I'm not panicked. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is. There you so go. let's go back down. And what I added up here now is what should the business owner do? At New Opportunities is that you're going to anticipate demand. Demand may not be there yet. So what you're going to do is you're going to get in front of it before everybody else goes, aha, we're back. And you're going to go into your current markets, which means the customers that you currently have and customers of your competitors. And you're going to go in with your current offer, whatever the product and sales mix that you have, that's what you're selling. Uh, because if you've done your homework and you've followed this all the way through, your competitors are probably not in good shape right now. If they're even still in business, go get that business. Second, as that credit expansion comes in, and now it's obvious to everybody, I still put anticipate demand because I think you ought to be early. What you're going to do now is you're going to go into new markets with your current offer. What that means is that in marketing terms, I'm going to move into adjacent markets. In other words, these people are not the core who I've been selling to, but the products and services that I offer fit these individuals as well. And I'm going to go in there because somebody else is going to move in that space I might as well get there first. Now we're in the, the real expansion. Everything's going fine. The euphoria. What do I want to do there? Ah, I must have double clicked. We've got, you want to take the existing demand. Now, this is reading what I've got. And this is all the customers, not only the ones I had when I started at the bottom, but the ones I've accumulated over time. And I've learned something from working with them. So what I'm going to do here, and most of you know the value ladder is that I've, I've, I've created an offer that's got several levels to it. Now it's a great time to go to this expanded base that I'm servicing and coming in with a new offer because what am I, what am I doing? I'm taking all of the remaining money off the table. Now, at the top, where would I be today if I was a business owner? And that's into cash flow management. I've gotta be looking at my AP, I gotta be looking at my AR, I've gotta be looking at my lines of credit, and I've gotta to say to myself, cash is now the most important resource and I better husband as much of that money as I could possibly get my hands on. So at the top, I'm into cash flow management. Now what's next? Next thing I'm going to do is that as I've found money, because in the early stages when you're making all that money, you get somewhat sloppy. Now I'm going to take the slop out. And my goal here is to become the lowest cost producer. Notice it says cost, not price. Price is a different decision about where you want to price yourself in the market versus cost. And the issue of becoming the lowest cost producer is I'm going to, I'm going to figure out how to produce it better, faster for less, same quality, honor the promise, do it for less money because what I want to do is before my customers begin to bail on me, I want to go to them with reductions and say, okay, the economy is hurting them. I understand more than likely they've been 
they've been slowing down on ordering from me. I can go to them and say, uh, because you've been a great customer, da 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 da. Uh, what we've done here is we've reduced our prices by 10%. I want to be proactive to go, go after the accounts I currently have so that I can hold them. And I, I think I can. I have in the past. Now I'm moving over to the other side, and the last one is now that we're down in the panic stage, and while everybody else is panicking and going out of business, what am I doing? I'm re-engineering my entire business. I started this with the lowest cost producer, but now I'm re-engineering everything about what I'm doing. I'm keeping my people working, and even though we've got a real internal focus, what am I getting ready for? I'm building new capacity because this too shall pass, kind of like a kidney stone. Maybe painful, <laughs> but eventually it's coming out. When that happens, I want to have a stronger, smarter company than I had when we started off the last time and we went through this cycle. So I realized that's pretty fast in 16 minutes as we covered that, but this has worked for me for a number of years. This is the type of consulting that I offer to my clients, uh, my small business accounts, uh, my large business accounts. They have economists on staff, so they got somebody else telling them that, whether they tell them this or not, I don't know, but uh, I'm not going to get in a conflict with them. But business owners are going, oh my God, the market's going down. What do I do? Here's what you do. That's so Donna? great. Yeah, I love that, Bill. And I love the predictability of it. I love the the ideas in that one that, you know, when everybody else is doing this, make sure that as a smart business owner, you're going against the grain so that you're when you follow this model, you come out ahead and you come out in, in the forward of it. Uh, in closing thoughts, I really love this quote that we had been talking about too, Bill, about, that says entrepreneurs are the heroes of our society because they put their soul into the game and risk failure for the rest of us. So we're in a, in a pandemic right now. It's kind of a scary time. Hopefully you've seen in this economic decision model that Bill just laid out, the predictability of where we are. And when we know predictability, we can make decisions, we can make choices, we can know smart moves to take us forward. Uh, so, I, you know, that's the, the hope that I think we wanted to portray in this training. Bill, any final thoughts? No, it, other than we have prescriptions for each one of these seven stages in the cycle. So we were able to tell business owners specifically what they should be doing here. Uh, so that really helps them. So, it, you know, it's one of those, I don't want people to go, I totally agree with you. I really want to do this. Now, what do I do? So, for example, cash flow management, we can give them a specific, you do this, 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 and this. Now, I realize that some of these don't relate to what we're doing in sales in our sales program, uh, but most of it does. So with that, I appreciate all of you uh, watching this uh, video. I have, as I've been told by my friends, a face for radio, and that's why I'm on radio. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much. And uh, we're going to sign off now. Bye. All right. Ciao.